Freedom and Democracy Next, President Nigel Farage. We're in the presence of a great man today, the President of Europe, a man who is so important, he is beyond criticism, beyond reproach, he is the king of the modern political class, he is the modern day Zeus, and he intends to rule us from Mount Berlimont, and woe betide anybody that questions his authority, or questions his dignity, or they will face severe punishment, indeed in my case, uh, the last time we met, um, and I have one or two things to say, uh, the Parliament imposed the maximum possible fine. And I'm told that if I say anything that upsets you, the microphone will be cut off. Well, what price free speech? What price democracy? But you've come back to us today, and now with the approval of Mr Sarkozy and Angela Merkel, you're the head of a new economic government for 500 million people. And you've launched your 10-year plan, your wish list, and I just wonder, have you remembered what happened to the last 10-year plan that was launched in 2000? It was, it was launched in this parliament to much acclaim. It was a total and utter crippling failure, even before the global recession hit. And in fact, all centralised EU plans fail. Just look at the disastrous, ruinous common fisheries policy. And now your beloved Euro has failed. It's failed politically at its first major hurdle. You weren't able to come up with a plan at that summit. You can't bail out Greece without the International Monetary Fund coming in to save, at least for the moment, your Euro dream. And yet, Mr Van Rompuy, your plan seems to be we're, we're losing, we're failing, let's have more of the same. Let's have more Europe, let's have more failure. But what really matters is the loss of democracy here. You have not been elected. You are not accountable. There is no mechanism for the peoples of Europe to remove you. It was Zeus, of course, that kidnapped Europa. My fear is you are kidnapping our democracy. You are only here because that Lisbon Treaty went through without the British people being given the referendum that they were promised. And as far as we're concerned, this is unfinished business. People fought and died 
so that we could be an independent, self-governing, democratic nation that was able to hire and fire its leaders, and no one that believes in democracy will accept the post of President of the European Union. Thank you. Europe of Freedom and Democracy, Nigel Farage, the floor is yours. Well, here we are, on the edge of a financial and social disaster, and in the room today we have the four men that were supposed to be responsible. And yet we've listened to the dullest, most technocratic speeches I've ever heard. You are all in denial. By any objective measure, the Euro is a failure. And who is actually responsible? I mean, who's in charge out of you lot? Well, of course, the answer is none of you, because none of you have been elected, none of you actually have any democratic legitimacy for the roles that you currently hold within this crisis. And into this vacuum, albeit reluctantly, has stepped Angela Merkel. And we are now living, we are now living in a German-dominated Europe. Something that the European project was actually supposed to stop. Something that those that went before us actually paid a heavy price in blood to prevent. I don't want to live in a German-dominated Europe, and nor do the citizens of Europe. But you guys have played a role. Because when Mr. Papandreou got up and used the word referendum, or Mr. Red, you described it as a breach of confidence, and your friends here got together like a pack of hyenas, rounded on Papandreou, had him removed, and replaced by a puppet government. What an absolutely disgusting spectacle that was. And not satisfied with that, you decided that Berlusconi had to go. So he was removed and replaced by Mr. Monti, a former European commissioner, a fellow architect of this Euro disaster, and a man who wasn't even a member of the parliament. It's getting like an Agatha Christie novel, where we're trying to sort of work out who's the next person that's going to be bumped off. The difference is, we know who the villains are. You should all be held accountable for what you've done. You should all be fired. And I have to say, Mr. Van Rompuy, 18 months ago when we first met, um, I was wrong about you. I said you'd be the quiet assassin of nation-state democracy, but you're not anymore. You're rather noisy about it, aren't you? You, an unelected man, went to Italy and said, this is not the time for elections, but the time for actions. What in God's name gives you the right to say that to the Italian people? Thank you. Then 